Hey guys, how's it going? Today we are spraying fruit trees and we're gonna pot up a few of the brand new cacti that Mountain Crest Gardens just sent out. So we're standing out here by our orchard where we have nine fruit trees, most of which we planted two years ago. Uh, the apricots, we had to replace some apricots. We planted those last spring. And then when we're done out here, we're gonna move closer to the greenhouse. We have an espaliered uh, Asian pear behind the greenhouse that we're gonna spray. And then also a miniature peach tree near the chicken coop. So here's a bit of a look. There are four fruit trees to the right of the flower shed. There's one right behind it. And there are four more on this side. So the reasons why we spray fruit trees is to control insects and disease. And I think depending on our climates, we all deal with different things afflicting our fruit trees, but I'm using two different sprays today mixed together in the same sprayer that kind of cover it all. I'll show you those here in a second. And you can spray this same mix three separate times throughout the fall and winter. The first application would go on late fall. Usually that means like November for us after all the leaves have fallen. The second round is usually on a nice day in January. And then the third application happens right around now, like late February, beginning of March. We have quite a number of orchards in our area and working down at the garden center, I was able to talk with a lot of uh, the owners of those orchards. And they said, you know, it's great if you can do all three applications but as long as you get that last one in, so the one we're doing today, uh, then you should be good to go. And that's what I did last year and everything was great. So my philosophy right now is spray less if you can. So I'm gonna do the same thing this year. We'll see what happens. So this is what we're using today. We have a copper fungicide and we have an all seasons horticultural and dormant spray oil. Both of these sprays can be used at different times of the growing season and for different reasons and on different plants. You definitely wanna check out the label, make sure you're mixing it up based on when, when and why you're spraying it because it will differ. Like the horticultural oil here, if you're using it as a dormant spray, like we are today, we mix it up at two and a half ounces per gallon. So in our two gallon sprayer, which is right behind me, we will be putting five ounces of this in that sprayer today. And then as a dormant application with the copper fungicide, we mix it up at two ounces per gallon. So we'll be putting four ounces in this sprayer. And because we have a lot of different things going on in the garden, we used to use just like a plastic, uh, measuring cup to measure these things out, but there's such a risk of contamination and accidentally putting, you know, some dead weed brew or whatever <laughs> into a fungicide container that we started using these. These are just little plastic cups that have the measurements listed on the side. So we use them and then you can toss them and we don't risk messing something up. So this here is a Honeycrisp apple. It's got a bunch of beautiful buds on it. I'm so excited. But the goal here when we spray is just to saturate the tree. We want it to be dripping in the end. Uh, we wanna get the trunk, the undersides of the branches in particular, the top sides, just everything. And these trees are getting a little tall. I'm guessing this is the last season I'm gonna be able to use a pump sprayer because of how tall these are getting. You can use a hose end sprayer, which they're super handy. You can't, because these two things need to be mixed at different ratios, you'd have to go through and do it twice uh, with the hose end. So I'm glad I don't have to do that this year and I don't have to get a hose out, which is also kind of nice. Before we get started, let me give you a tour of the fruit trees. Uh, right in the back corner, this is a flavor top nectarine. It has grown so beautifully and it has the best fruit, the best. And I never really feel uh, the need to tuck fruit trees into flower beds, but if I did, this is one I would add another one of. It's, it's they're so, so good and it's such a prolific tree and you don't need to have two varieties for that one to still bear. Right in front of it, we have a honey crisp apple, which has not been super productive yet. Uh, we had a few apples on it last year, but I see a ton of growth spurs on here. I mean, just all over the place. So I'm hopeful that this year is its year to start going for it. Right here, we have a perfection apricot. We had a harcot in here the first year. We decided to dig it out last spring because I was able to taste the apricots off that tree the first year, and I was not super impressed. They were a little bit on the mealy side compared to the Tilton, which is the one we have on the other side of the shed. That was probably the best tasting apricot I've ever had, but I did kind of want to have two varieties of those. So I went with the perfection hoping it's as good as the Tilton. Right behind that, we have a Santa Rosa plum, highly recommend, super productive and amazing flavor. Right behind the shed, we have a red Bartlett pear, which we are taking out this spring and putting a new one in its place. The first year we had it, it got fire blight. You guys might remember, I showed you this tree a, a bunch of times. We had to lop the whole top of the tree off uh, because it was just so, so infected. And then it, it put on a bunch of new growth last year. And by the time I came out here to, to dig it out, it had already set some pears. And I don't really have a sentimental attachment to plants. 
normally, but it seemed like it was just trying its hardest. So I let it go last season, and then I just decided, you know what, it's still on the small side. It's a good time to get it out and get a fresh one in here that doesn't have issues, doesn't have a weakness, so that it can have a chance to catch up with these others before the other ones get too big. On the other side of the shed, we have an Alberta peach right here. Amazing freestone peaches, wonderful flavor. We have a Snow Beauty white. Also wonderful flavor, freestone, which means the flesh of the peach does not stick to the pit in the middle. When you cut it open, it, it like freely releases from the pit, which is so nice. Uh, we had a late frost last year that nailed these trees. So I didn't have a, a whole bunch of peaches, like just a handful. The year before we had loads of them, which was the, their first year. So I'm hopeful this year our weather is in our favor. If I, I'm gonna pay closer attention. attention. If I notice we're gonna have a cold spell, I'm gonna come and cover them. Uh, because they have a bunch of buds too. I think it's gonna be a good year for those. And then here's our Tilton apricot, amazing. If you have a chance to plant one of these, I highly recommend. And then this one is our Fuji apple. This one was very productive last year. It put on a lot of growth. So I'm happy with this one. And our wheat, I did wanna show you guys that. I've noticed a number of questions about how the wheat's doing. This is kind of what it does over the winter time. So it all came up. Russell's checking it out, and it will take off growing here once we get enough heat. Okay, let's mix and spray. So the horticultural oil we use primarily as an insecticide because it envelops and smothers insect eggs that may be overwintering on your tree. So it takes care of things like mealybugs, whitefly, scale, spider mites, uh, galls, leaf rollers. There's a whole bunch of things on the label, but that's mainly what we use it for here. It does take care of some diseases as well, like powdery mildew, but that's kind of what we use the copper fungicide for. It does um, bacterial blights, powdery mildew, black spot, leaf curl. That's a big one for us on plums and peaches. In fact, I showed you on our miniature peach tree year before last, we had leaf curl and I used this, it cleared it right up and it did great last year. So again, those can be used as a three part spray regimen, but in my case, I'm just using it as a one spray regimen. Seems to work out great. Okay, we're all done. They're all sprayed. It's a really good feeling. Looks pretty much the same as it did when we started the process, but the spray is there. So let's head back up toward the house and get our miniature peach and the Paris Spalier done. Hey girls, here's our miniature peach. The variety is Pixie. I can't remember the full on size. Like maybe it gets six feet if you plant it in the ground. And honestly, I should probably find a spot. It's been in this container for maybe what, four years now? I mean, I'm guessing that, I wonder, I wonder if the roots have grown in, nope. Grown into the ground below it. Nope. Wow. It's just happy as can be in this pot. It's got fresh pliable growth on the end. Yeah, it's a happy camper. It likely won't stay in this spot, you know, cause we're gonna be retooling this whole area around it just a little bit. I mean, there will still be some sort of a pathway, still be an arbor. So, you know, maybe it'll stay. I don't know, we'll see. Now this is the size of fruit tree I like to spray. Easy. So you wanna make sure to get it from all sides cause right there, dry spots. Fully saturate. I don't know how easy the espalier pear is gonna be to get to. We piled all of our plants that were kind of left over that we didn't get to last season to plant back behind the greenhouse. It's gonna be dicey. Look at our magnolia though. I know I never got it planted last year because I couldn't decide exactly where I wanted it to be planted, but it's doing awesome. That's really promising if it does so well in its container over winter. It's gonna do even better in the ground. Oh, not too bad. Okay, look at the growth on this thing. Oh my gosh. This is the year we need to get it out of this container though, this raised bed. So I think we can easily 
slide boards out. Well, you know, these will all be planted. They'll be somewhere else. So we can access this with the tractor. And if we can take the res bed apart, instead of having to lift the pear tree out, because I'm guessing its root system is massive, we can kind of pull it forward and into the bucket of the tra tractor. I'm hoping that that's, I don't know, I'm hoping <laughs> that it'll be that easy. And I'm thinking of planting it on one of the sides, either the west side or the east side of the orchard fence where it's solid, where it's kind of like hiding all of our uh, tractor implements and bagged goods and stuff like that. Um, I'm hoping that that's where it ends up. We'll see. This will be easy to spray though. Once from the front, once from the back. All done with the fruit tree spraying. We can check that off of our spring to-do list. Now I'm gonna gather up some supplies and get them into the Hartley so we can do some cactus repotting. We're here in the Hartley. I've got a few, well, two different sizes of terracotta pot here, and they're all, except for one of them, used, so they have a really neat look to them. I love that look when they've got some white on the outside and they just are a little bit darker in color. And then I've got cactus mix. That's all I'm gonna need today are my containers and the cactus soil. And we get to use our brand new potting tray. I mean, this is the only thing I've potted up in it so far. This needs a drink of water and I need to go find it a new spot today. But that's so exciting. And then over here, we've got our cactus and succulents in two spots. I ended up putting them in a couple of trays. This is the tray that comes from the bottom of the three-tier grow light garden, but it's watertight. So I was able to line up all the plants in there and then just put a little bit of water at the base for them to suck up. Uh, today, we're gonna be focusing mostly on these right in here because cactus don't do quite as well in mixed succulent arrangements. I mean, you can do it. You can plant them in with succulents. I've done it a lot, but you have to be a little bit more careful about how you water because they don't want quite as much water as the other succulents do. So I thought it would be better just to have them individually potted and we can enjoy them just kind of the beauty and the uniqueness of them on their own. And these are the other ones right here. I don't know, let's see, are there any cacti in this mix? I think most of these are semps and echeverias and other soft succulents. We might tackle this one too. It is so cute, but those are the most wicked cactus ever. Ooh, don't touch it. So this is a bunny ears cactus right here. And while it looks really soft and cute and fuzzy, every single individual one of those yellow like little polka dots they're comprised of, I don't know, hundreds of little needles that will stick into your, your skin and you can't see them. <laughs> They're really hard to remove. I've had to use uh, many pieces of duct tape to try to get these little needles out of my skin. So I don't know if I want to tackle this one today or not. This one's cute. And then all of these. That's a really pretty collection right there. First one is done. I put a little sand as a top dress. I may not do that on all of them. I might go get some larger stones, but this is an Echinopsis mercenary. Such a beautiful color. It actually looks really pretty with that sand. Love that. 
I think I'm just gonna line these up right here, right on this windowsill. Couple of things that makes potting cactus easier. You can use a dish towel or a piece of newspaper rolled up lengthwise, and that will go around the cactus itself so you don't have to hold on to it and it's soft enough that it doesn't damage anything. And then uh, I'm using this little shovel right here just to kind of help you know, manipulate the soil around the root ball so I don't have to touch the plant too closely. Okay, so I'm just gonna repeat those same steps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven more times. Here we go. There they are. Aren't they gorgeous? They look so pretty all lined up right there. So I'll start on the left and attempt to tell you what these are. This is an Astrophytum star cactus, Stenocactus quarianus, Astrophytum bishop's cap. Oh uh, boy, what is this one? I can see the tag reflection in the window. Parodia, Hasselberg bergai, bergai. Mammillaria feather cactus, Echinopsis marcenari. This one does not have a tag. Did I drop it? Oh, maybe it's this one. Mammillaria senilis, maybe? Gymnocalyceum spegazinii. <laughs> Stenocereus gray ghost organ pipe. Fuzzy navel echinopsis. Astrophytum miragostima. And the crazy bunny ears. And the only time I got poked was with this one right here. And it was when I was reaching to grab the one next to it. I got a little bit too close, but I didn't get poked at all while I was repotting, so that's good. I do need to water, I got a hose, you guys. I got one of those pocket hoses, look at it expand. So water fills it up. They had it available in smaller lengths, but like the, we had the 30 footer uh, to begin with, which I thought would be plenty because the structure is 26 feet long, uh, but it would only reach about halfway without stretching it really hard. And I don't know how strong all of this stuff is down here. So I really wanted to have a ton of slack, which 100 foot was a little bit of an overreaction. I probably should have done the 75 but it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna get a little basket to set it in and it's just really nice, it's flexible. Like it just pulls out really nicely, makes it really easy to water. And then I got a short dram wand that has the thumb valve and I always check to make sure, sink always needs to be cleaned anyway, that there isn't any air in the lines. The only downside is that the, once you turn it off, there's still water that runs out. So like if you're going in between things, like I'll water this one, I turn it off and then I have to just tip it up right side up, otherwise you drip water everywhere. But it beats a watering can for sure. So I'm not gonna give these much, just a tiny little bit. Need some water too. Some of the gypsy queens are starting to open. They were the slowest. So we've got the Carnegie's right there. This is the Etouffee. Blend, oh geez, they're so pretty. Love having a workspace up here, so, so nice. I can stand and look out the window. It's at the perfect working height. Oh, love it so much. And you guys, that is gonna do it for today's video. Still have a bunch of these plants to uh, work into projects, which is so exciting, but I love having just this lineup of cacti because one, I know how easy they are to take care of. I just love that they can sit there and just be happy, uh, yeah. <laughs> It's nice to have some plants that are like that because I have a lot of plants in here so far that can't just sit there to be happy. Uh, so you've got to have a good balance. And then, like I said, we'll be back out doing some fruit tree pruning here really soon, probably by the end of the week. So I will show you guys that when we do it. Thank you so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.